Good morning. As you can see, I'm creating this video from the floor because my back has really been thrown out. So I'm going to try and get through the presentation for today. And so if you'll just follow along as we do this and follow my instructions, you'll be good to go. Um, today we we're going to cover the outline of the new unit, which will go all the way to the end of the um, month. So we'll finish this right before um, Christmas break. Um, I'll cover the notes that we're going to go over today, or this um, unit, the labs, activities, writing, tasks, quizzes, and tests, and a project that we're going to do toward the end. Um, I'm going to need some Photoshop information from you today, and then I will go through today's notes, and then there will be a quiz on Schoology for you to take. Um, there's no question review on it today. It's all random, and please don't collaborate on it while you're doing it. Um, the notes we're going to cover today are about the history. <clears throat> In a couple of days, it'll be the principles of fingerprinting, classification of finger fingerprinting, automated fingerprinted systems, detecting and preserving fingerprints, and enhancing um, them digitally on December 10th, and that's where our project will come in. Um, tomorrow, I'm planning on doing a lab if I'm there. Um, we'll have a writing on the 2nd. We'll create a 10 card, which is inking your fingerprints on December 3rd. Um, another writing prompt on December 8th. Fingerprint dusting lab on the 9th. And then the Photoshop project, which will span three or four days. Um, there'll be daily notes, quizzes. Um, the types below can include multiple choice, true, false, matching, fill in the blank, essay, critical thinking. For the test, there is a possible 99 possible questions, but the test won't be that long. But it'll be a mixture of all these along with the daily note quizzes and the weekly summary quizzes on December 4th and 11th. It can contain all these different types of tests. But first, what I want you to do is go to self-service, check to see if I have, have access to the Photoshop. If not, go to this form. Um, you must be signed into your school email account to go to this form. Click pause on the video at this time and then go to the form or install Photoshop if you have available to you on Photoshop. So pause the video at this point. Check self-service. If you have Photoshop, install it. If you've already installed it, then you're good to go. If you can't access Photoshop from self-service, go to the form. And I will put this um, presentation up on the... Um, Google Classroom so you can click on the link directly if you need to. So pause the video now and do that. Picking back up, this is chapter 14 in your book. Um, this is the new edition. You can see this says 11th edition, but our book is the 7th edition. But it's not changed that much. There is some new stuff, but we'll explain it as we go along. Um, the first systematic attempt for, at a personal identification system was derived by flight, p French police expert Alphonse Bertillon. Bertillon system is relied on detailed descriptions of the subject combined with full-length profile photographs and a system of precise body measurements. <coughs> oh, sorry, and there'll probably be another one of those coming along. This system was called anthropom anthropometry. Um, we will be doing a lab about this tomorrow we'll, where you'll be gathering body measurements from each person. They're not anything to be embarrassed about. They're just finger length, arm length, your height, and etc. And then we'll compile all that data and graph it. Um, next I want you to watch this video. It's about two minutes long but it's got important information for the quiz. Hello and welcome to History Pod. On the 28th of July 1858, William Herschel, a British magistrate in West Bengal in India, made the first modern use of fingerprints for identification. Although records of finger and palm prints being used as early as the year 300 were subsequently found in China, Herschel was the first Westerner to routinely take advantage of the unique nature of a person's prints in order to sign contracts.
It was only later that their use in criminal investigations began. Herschel had been interested in fingerprinting for a number of years, but having paid in advance for an expensive contract in which a local businessman agreed to build a new road, Herschel chose to take the full handprint of the contractor to prove his commitment to honour the construction. Herschel himself later admitted in his 1916 book, The Origin of Fingerprinting, that the print was simply a hope to scare the contractor away from disowning a written signature. At the time, he didn't really know the science behind the uniqueness of a person's prints. However, the success of this policy led Herschel to routinely use prints to then authorise and authenticate legal documents. With his increasing collection and further reference to his own fingerprints, leading him to publicly state his belief that a person's print pattern was unique, permanent and unchangeable. Having studied thousands of prints, he later realised that he could even stop taking a full handprint and instead take prints of just two fingers. However, it was another 34 years before fingerprints were used to solve a crime in an Argentinian case where a mother murdered her two sons but left her bloody handprint on a doorpost. Okay, William Herschel is a name you need to remember because he influenced Francis Galton who published the first textbook called Fingerprints and it's still a classic today and it's still used today and we use all of his um, system that he created based on Herschel's work. Um, the British government adopted Galton's fingerprinting as a supplement to the Bertillon system. The next step was to create a classification system capable of filling thousands, filing thousands of many prints in a logical and searchable sequence. And this was done by two different people. Dr. Juan Vucicic devised a system used in Spanish-speaking countries, and while Sir William, Sir Henry, Sir Edward Henry devised another classification used in most English-speaking countries. And we're going to be doing our system based on Henry's system. And when we take your prints, you will classify your prints, and we will do a whole lab based on classification of fingerprints. In 1903, however, when Bertillon's system could not distinguish two men, one called Will West and the other William West, it was fingerprinting that clearly distinguished them. Um, William, Will West was incarcerated in the Leavenworth, Kansas prison, the federal prison in Leavenworth, in 1903. And this is his picture, and I know it's not very clear, but... One day, another prisoner was bought, brought in, and his name was William West, and this is his picture. They did all their Bertillon measurements. They're listed down here. They're very close to each other, and they thought Will had escaped um, because this person here, same name, came up, same, almost same identical measurements. And remember, any measurements are based on human, human error, so some of these are half a centimeter off, and so... It could be human error that these two people were the same person. But what in the end came to figure out is Will and William did not know each other and were not related in any way. It was just a quirk of fate, if you want to call it that, that these two guys showed up at the same prison almost the same time with the same measurements that brought fingerprinting into the front for the United States. Otherwise, the United States was still stuck on the Bertillon system, which identified a person um, using their body measurements and pictures, but that didn't help to solve any crimes. All it did was help identify people that were already in prison. Um, after the Will West incident, the use of fingerprints by the New York City Civil Service Commission in 1901 started. Training by the police by Scotland Yard. British were way ahead of the United States on... Um, fingerprints. So they trained 
um, American police in, at the 1904 World's Fair, and then be, fingerprinting became began to be used in earnest in all American cities at, after that point. So fingerprinting has only been around for about 116 years or less in the United States, far longer in, in England, and so it took the United States a while to catch up. And that is it for the notes. Um, when you go on the Schoology, there's a quiz there. It's six question long. Please don't work together on it. I want to see what you know. This You'll get questions again later this week after the next set of notes, and then there'll be a weekly wrap-up quiz. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to do lab, and I'll be back. Thanks for listening.